This is Aisha, the founder of Aloe Curves, plant-based feminine and skincare company based out of Dallas, Texas. I'm excited to introduce to you our video series for your mini curves. Um, it's where we're going to interview experts in the field to get their take on all kinds of things for our curves, our skin, our confidence, just being a woman. I'd like to introduce you to Lakeisha Grant, who has a wealth of knowledge on all things mental health. Um, I'm Lakeisha Grant, uh, LPC, owner and therapist of Mindfully Restored Counseling in Dallas, um, virtually right now, but yes, based in Dallas, soon to be a therapist, I'm working with a nonprofit organization also in Dallas called Abounding Prosperity, um, so soon to be one of their therapists there to help do more community mental health needs, so I'm excited about that. Very nice. How long have you been a therapist? I've been fully licensed since 2014 okay. um, and in practice by myself since 2018. Um, and I went full time. <laughs> I went full time into private practice at the beginning of this year. Right when COVID hit. <laughs> right when COVID hit. Had, ooh, if I could do it over again, I probably would have <laughs> waited. But you know, I'm making it. I'm, it's been it's been a learning curve, and so I'm actually kind of glad not glad that COVID hit, but glad I had the time and space to to learn what I need to learn during this. Okay, how is um, have you seen have you seen any trends in counseling since COVID has hit? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, more so dealing with anxiety, um, not knowing what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. which I'm not a psychic. I don't pretend to try to be able to answer people, answer that for people, but helping them walk with their anxiety instead of letting their, their anxiety drag them fulfill. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> I definitely understand. Look, anxiety <laughs> queen. Man. Well, yeah. on the healthier side now. <laughs> Let me say that. My therapist. Yeah. Like, well, I'm out here telling people I ain't give you no coping skills. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'll take that back. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We are going to talk about today how hygiene can affect your confidence. How is your confidence affected when your hygiene suffers? Good question. Your hygiene, your, a lot of people don't take into account their hygiene, like daily acti well, activities of daily living is what it's called in a in a clinical sense, um, sums it up as hygiene. Sleep hygiene, eating hygiene, physical hygiene, all of that is included. So from a physical standpoint though, if you're hygiene, if you're not tending to it properly, like not brushing your teeth, not washing your face, not washing your hair, you don't feel like a full person. You kind of feel like a shell of yourself. Lack of hygiene care or lack of clean cleanliness Granted, everybody's baseline is different and everybody's situation is different, but neglecting it, I should say, a neglect of your hygiene can be a sign or a symptom of anxiety or depression also. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like what you said about you're a shell of yourself. Um, I, I worked with this relationship coach one time and one of the strategies she gave me was to make myself beautiful every day. And I was like, girl, I ain't got time for that. But, but once I sat down and processed it, it's simple things like with my locks, misting your locks, Aisha. You can do that once a day. Oil it. You can, you can put oil in it. Washing your face. And then that's, honestly, after I talked to that relationship coach is what inspired me to add on skincare to what I was already producing with the feminine care because I didn't have a skincare regimen. Skincare regimen to me was, I bought this expensive ass soap from this black owned company and it cost a lot and I use it on my face. That's skincare, you know, but it's not. So, so much deeper than that. So much deeper than that. And so I'm like, okay, what does my face need? Then I started paying attention to like, you know, you got big pores and then paying attention to well, what do you do when you, when this happens or when you sleep on the wrong side, like I started paying attention to all these things and it's like, oh, that's what she means, make myself beautiful every day. 
And then I started to log what I need. Not only do you need a wash, you need to put moisture back into your face. You need a moisturizer that works for your skin type. You need, it was, it was a crazy journey. Even as, and then speaking as a woman too, like realizing what your skin needs, yeah. your skin changes during your menstrual time. Yeah. Like, so men your men menstrual cycle, in addition to already everyday stress, everyday anxiety. Yes. And now your pores are like, okay, girl, hey, we here. <laughs> That's me. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't, I couldn't always calculate where my stress, stress showed up. And so my skin underneath here is a big one. Um, my shoulders, real, they get really tense. Like, and now I've realized that that's something a chiropractor needs to operate on. <laughs> Another thing to notice when it comes to anxiety or stress, being able to recognize where you're, recognize where stress comes out in your body at different times, because it won't always impact you the same every single time. Um, for example, I was doing waiting for an interview or to speak with someone this a meeting this past week a couple of days ago and as I was waiting for the guy to come in I could feel I could feel my core starting to shake and like my stomach to start feel kind of queasy almost and I, I had to do a quick check-in with myself like okay Keisha you're feeling kind of anxious you're starting to stress out let's take some deep breaths let's you know keep checking in with yourself and try to calm down and I was able to reduce my, my anxiety level in that moment just by recognizing that or realizing like, hey, this isn't normally, this isn't a normal reaction for you or this situation isn't a normal reaction for you right now. Yeah. What, what can you do to soothe that again instead of suppress it? Um, it's just been an interesting, creating this feminine care line has opened up my eyes to what, Another, another definition for make yourself beautiful every day. Because it's not just makeup, you know, and putting on pretty clothes. Like, how do I want to show up? Like, yes. if I'm rushing, what, what would I wear if I'm rushing? What can I quickly grab? How do I want people to view me? Like, what scents do I want people to smell? Like, when I walk by them, my continents, my, you know, it's just, it, it just opened up a whole nother, and I'm glad I was at the point in my life where I could receive what she was saying and process it in the way that I can. Yeah, no, my mom would always tell me, like, if you can smell yourself, other people can smell you. <laughs> that goes, but that goes both ways for yeah. good and bad smells. Like, uh -huh. so think about that. If your hygiene is lacking and you can smell yourself, like, mm, mm -hmm. expensive. like, that ain't, I don't want to smell like that. <laughs> So, that's <laughs> so yeah learning to take care of yourself learning to tend to those small details mm -hmm. that add to your to your beauty regimen to your self-care regimen to your overall mental health it impacts it all how big of a role does self-care play when it comes to your mental health for me therapeutically with my clients i think it plays a major role i use encourage and explain self-care as a part of mental health mm -hmm. um i don't it's not a one size fit all though so i even have this worksheet a worksheet that i created hopefully. come on you know i'm trying i'm working on a planner a planner slash journal oh that'll be nice and it's mental health connected oh yes. that'll be good and so this worksheet that i have it talks about self-care or breaks down self-care in like a five-point component how do you take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and relationally? Relationally being the relationship that you have with yourself and with others. So friends, family, how, what are you doing to take care, to nurture those relationships? Back to what self-care looks like in general, though. Also, it's not going to always be, you're not going to always have, feel like doing the best level of your self-care. So on the worksheet, within those five components, I broke it down into a good, better, best category. What are some things that you can do at a bare minimum when you're feeling good and yes. then when it's your worst day? Yes. <laughs> you know, when you're feeling kind of good, what are some things that you can do to take care of yourself physically? What does that look like? For me personally, making sure I get at least three bottles of water. That my bare minimum physical self-care. You know, wash your face, brush your teeth, get at least three bottles of water today, Keisha. 
then okay when you're feeling better how do you amp that up i might do a full yoga class i may i may not i don't run unless my life is in danger so that'll never be on the list <laughs> um <laughs> but then at your best level of self-care or best physical level of self-care what does that look like for you for me that's you know putting on makeup dressing up you know making sure my hair looks nice you know actually taking time to detangle and condition my hair yeah. and just you know running some water through it and be like hey I'm, I'm it's here, here. <laughs> but breaking it down because it doesn't always if you use your best level of self-care massages um spending time with family friends when you're feeling your absolute lowest it's not going to impact you the same and it's going to feel like a chore so i encourage my clients if it feels like a chore to you when you don't get it done you've already convinced yourself that you're not worthy of doing it and now you're going to emotionally punish yourself so trying to separate it you don't feel like doing this right now this high level of self-care but what is something you can do that's good it's taking a walk outside. That's still physical self-care. So I, yeah, self-care is something that it's very important. Yeah, and people exclude that a lot of times in their processes. They just want to get to the process. It's like, well, the process could be better if this preliminary, these preliminary, um, I don't know if you would call them boundaries or goals, but um, I would I could consider it a boundary. It is still something that, because even in setting up boundaries for other people, you have to think about it. You have to set boundaries for yourself to know what you're crossing for yourself. So if my self-care for me, if my boundary in my self-care is okay, hey, you're starting to feel anxious and nervous about something. What can you do to, to speak to that, that feeling, to that emotion? How can you soothe it instead of suppress it? That's good. Oh, I was frozen. How can you soothe it as opposed to suppressing it? Okay. So speaking of soothing and suppressing, are there any particular products that people can incorporate um, throughout this process when they're working on their good, better, best? Yes. Right. Um, I mean, even that I think is subjective and very individual. I can be somewhat of a product junkie in trying to figure out what works best for me. Um, so the easiest thing to think of for me right now would like be hair care products, trying to figure out what speaks to my hair, what help it grow, what helps it stay moisturized, what helps it make my curls full. Like, but even that changes with the seasons. Mm -hmm. I have realized that on this natural hair journey, what I use in the spring and summer is different than what I can use in the fall and winter. And so it's those products, as you become more in tune with your emotions and who you are just on an everyday basis, good, bad, or indifferent, realizing that, okay, some products won't work if I'm already at my peak level of stress. It may work on a preventative measure, but not at a, you know, to bring me down. Yeah. And then also, can people view it as, uh, good is um, I wrap my hair at night, whatever. Mm -hmm. be be better is I wrapped it, misted it, maybe put a couple twists in it, pinned it back. Best is I deep conditioned it, yes. ran the steamer through it. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Twisted it, untwisted it, fluffed it. <laughs> yes. You know? All of that, that is exactly the that step stool, that step ladder of ranging of what that looks like in good, better, or best. Because you're not going to always feel like your best. You know, especially some days when you are exhausted, you're in grad school, you know. Yeah. By the time you close your laptop down, you're like, I just need to get in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm already doing my homework in the bed. So that as soon as I'm done, laptop is slammed closed. I put it on a couch. I don't even... Put it in a bag, so trifling, and then I crash. <laughs> exactly. So to think that you're going to twist your, twist your locks up, pin them back, like, you lucky if my pillow has a pillowcase on it right now. Hello? 